I took the job at Millfield because Millfield is distinctively different. Um, it's a school that's not shackled by tradition. Uh, it has the resource and the attitude and the capacity to lead the way uh, and to define education in the UK now and in the future. It's a beautiful place to be. Uh, my family are very happy here. Uh, it's a warm community that's welcoming to everyone when they join it. And it is a leader in the country already and internationally, and it's exciting to be at the helm of that. Diversity and tolerance are probably the most important qualities that are born at Millfield. Interestingly, uh, I probably need to explain this one. We want to create disruptive pupils, not children that are disruptive in the classroom, but children that are disruptors in society, children that are prepared to question and that are prepared to contribute in the face of opposition from others. And Millfield has always done that. The numbers of entrepreneurs coming out from Millfield over the years has been astronomical. And I'm interested to find out why that is and to redouble our efforts in that regard. But qualities of diversity, qualities of tolerance, qualities of contribution and competition uh, and also being prepared to generate a project team um, for any situation is crucial for a Millfield pupil. The Millfield way is a new concept about how we should view education and the development of children. We want Millfield to be the premier arena in the world for the development of children and we see the route to that through the Millfield way. Millfield has been rightly famous in the past for its sporting prowess, but that has been to hide the diversity of activities that has gone on at Millfield. It's a school that evolved separately from the state and independent sectors over 80 years. And I suspect the Millfield way has always been here, but Millfield hasn't realized that it's never been anywhere else. And it is an attitude which brings together key staff in a child's life in a way that doesn't happen in other schools. The excellence of coaching that we have here can teach us something in the classroom. And the approach to individual tuition in the classroom can teach us something on the sports field as well. And the desire to bring all of those staff together around the child at the centre is crucial in the Millfield way. Millfield is traditionally different because it has evolved separately to the state and independent sectors. It has had uh, high value bursary students in it from day one in 1935. It has been an internationally representative community since 1935. It recognises that we will find the best in every child, no matter where that be, no matter what field that child has excellence in, we will find it even if they don't know they've got it. And the last thing that we would do uh, would be to reject a child based on underperformance in a particular area because we would recognise that we could find their excellence in other areas. I think that we are not hidebound by tradition. Uh, I am incredibly uh, lucky to have such a loyal group of alumni who are so prepared to embrace change in a way that just doesn't exist in other schools and similarly with staff. Staff are prepared to embrace any possible form of education. They're prepared to countenance it, they're prepared to try it, and the children are like that as well. That's a question that keeps me awake at night and fills me with excitement and fear in equal measure. Um, because to a certain extent, it's my responsibility to define that. Um, and I think we need to be a school which acknowledges the diverse nature of Britain now and the diverse nature of our global community. We've got 68 nationalities represented at Millfield, about 24 children is the maximum number from any one nationality from around the world. That is unique in the independent sector. We're not shackled by tradition in a way that many independent schools are. And the attitude of teachers, governors, pupils, and old boys and girls at Millfield is that this place can go anywhere. Uh, and that's what's so exciting about Millfield. But I think that to define a school for the future, it is going to be all about the responsibility that we give children. I'm a huge fan of pupil voice. Children have a voice and they need to realise that that voice is powerful and loud. 
and they need to recognise they have responsibilities. Uh, a lot of children are just a little bit too passive uh, in the UK at the moment, and we need children who are actively involved in society from the very earliest age. Uh, and that's what Millfield is seeking to do in the future, and we want to create an environment where that's natural and where children question their teachers. Uh, I think that is going to be central uh, to schooling in the future, and that's quite a scary place for traditional schools to be. My responsibilities to the school are to make sure that it is a happy and successful community now and in the future for the children that are here. My responsibilities are to my staff uh, to make sure that they are doing the best job for the children and that they are happy and successful in what they do. My responsibilities are to education generally in the UK to show them through what we do at Millfield what can be done differently between independent and state schools and how the diversity of what goes on in Millfield could and should be a model for every child in the UK. I think Millfield is an enormously successful organisation by many people's measures already. Uh, people look to our sporting success, our music success, our academic success, our financial success, uh, and those are all central to being a viable organisation for the future. But Millfield wants to lead the way in terms of public benefit. The Millfield mix uh, has been central to Millfield since its foundation in 1935, and it was groundbreaking. It's only been latterly that other independent schools have been forced to acknowledge the importance of public benefit through bursary provision to other pupils. Millfield has done that since its very foundation. I would define success at Millfield as every child happy, contributing to the school and contributing to society when they leave, having a lifelong connection with key tenets of a Millfield education, whether that be questioning diversity, whether that be um, involvement in music, involvement in sport, uh, challenging authority, being able to pull together teams. So I would like to measure Millfield's success by what its pupils are doing five years after they've left the school, 10 years, 15 years and 20 years. Headline measures of success are almost useless. And in actual fact, Millfield has delivered on all of those headline measures of success, but I'm not sure that those should be the key definers. I see Millfield in five years' time as being rightfully famous globally for what it has always done well, but what it seeks for the future. This has always been an aspirational community. We do aspiration well, but actually I'm not sure that the school has recognised that it has a role to play nationally and globally in terms of influencing debate around music education, uh, diverse approaches to children with dyslexia and children of different intelligences, uh, and of course the importance of sport in children's development. And central to that is the mix at Millfield and the social and international mix. Uh, so I think that Millfield in five years' time will be rightfully taking its place and recognising that it has a voice which it needs to use to support all children in the UK.